Hello, welcome to our webinar. I am Whitney White and with me I have Neil Jones and I am the Director of Marketing for North America and we're so excited to have you here. Neil, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, the Director of Strategic Accounts and TAM up here in Canada and uh, happy to be here and uh, we're getting a message. Yes, I'm so excited. This is our first marketing workshop of season two. So I wasn't part of season one, but I am so excited for this season. We have a really good schedule booked out. And um, in the back end, you guys go ahead and locate your control panel for GoToWebinar, and you'll be able to go down to the chat section or the question section. And we've got Bo Freeman in the background answering those questions, and um, he'll chime in if anyone has any questions, and I will uh, kind of keep an eye on it too. Let me go ahead and pull that up while I'm thinking about it. So to get in there, tell us where you're from. Uh, we, I came into the office today for the first time in like, I don't know, three, four months. Oh, no, no, no. I think I came in one day in December. <laughs> but, so I'm here. I, it's a little messy, but it's fine, right? <laughs> So Neil, are you at home or are you? I, in I am at home. I am like loving the at home thing. <laughs> Personally, I love it. Definitely makes life, uh, yeah, my commute real tough, right? You know, make a coffee and walk upstairs. <laughs> I know, right? It's the best. But um, okay, so let's get started. Today, we are talking about flood and water prevention. Um, I'm excited to have Neil on because he's got a personal experience with flood and water preven prevention, but we'll get into that. So hopefully you guys have located your the question section. You're able to talk to us. If anything happens with this presentation or you can't hear me, go ahead and put that in there as well. Um, also, Bo, can you, we want to start with a poll. Bo, can you launch the poll? I lost my control panel. <laughs> I don't know where it went. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we want to know if you're currently installing the IQ water valve. This will kind of tell us um, where to go with our presentation how deep we need to go into it if you guys are already familiar with it and uh we can keep it a little bit more simple and we can get straight to questions so go ahead and answer that yes or no I'll give you a couple minutes there the answer should be yes <laughs> neil you're not supposed to give him a cheat come on <laughs> trust me the answer should be yes <laughs> Coming from the guy with experience, right? <laughs> All right, go ahead and close that pull down for us, Bo. Thank you. Okay, so what we want to do is kind of give you an overview on the water valve. So the water valve can automatically shut off main water to the home when leaks are flooded when leaks or floods are detected by a flood detector. So those two devices pair really, really nicely together. If you just have an IQ water valve that can turn on and off the water, that's great. If you have, I think one year when we bought our first house, we had our sprinklers bust and they there was a big fountain in our front yard and our neighbor called and they were like, uh, you have a leak. I didn't have anything like this. So I had to drive 35 minutes home <laughs> and then manually shut it off. But when you pair it with a flood detector, then when water's detected, you can do it from anywhere using the learn.com app because it's Z-Wave plus communicated. So you're able to, if I'm here at work 40 minutes from my house and I have water detected under a sink by my um, water take, anything like that, I can shut it off and not have that stress of having a leak become a massive flood, right? And you can control it from IQ panel or from the learn.com app. Neil, am I missing anything? Uh, the only other thing would be, uh, you know, having rules set up, right? So through the alarm.com uh, customer portal, having rules that are automatically turning off your IQ water bill. I didn't even consider rules. That would be so much nicer. <laughs> I, 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 I may have a story about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to get into the details. So the primary features and benefits of IQ water valve, it's affordable. It's significantly less than competing products. And um, you're going to save dealers and in users money and uh i mean who doesn't want that it's easy to install there's absolutely no plumber required which is huge um you just install it on standard quarter turn ball valves and uh 
at the installs, I haven't seen it installed. Neil, how easy is it, would you say, comparatively? Uh, it's the easiest thing. I've I've had my 15-year-old nephew install one. Uh, one of our other TAM directors had his five-year-old son install one. <laughs> oh my gosh, really? Yes. I didn't know that. It's I... on a, if you look up our uh, TAM workshop on IQ Water Valve last year, you can actually watch uh, Jason's son install uh, an IQ Water Valve. Was it Trace? Yes. Oh my gosh. He did, a, he did amazing. We got to hire him. <laughs> I have got to pull that up. I love Trace. He is it's like just a barrel of terror. He's fantastic. He started racing and he installed one of these things. That's yep. pretty cool. <laughs> So this is obviously super easy to install. The no plumber required some of those other water valves out on the market. They're a lot more complicated. And so you do want that plumber there. And that's just adding more cost to it and more complication, which nobody really wants that. And then, as we mentioned before, you have automatic shutoff after leak, de leak detection. So using IQ flood, PowerG flood, one of those devices, when water is detected, shut it off. And then you don't have to worry about any massive floods. My friend, her daughter's house burned down an hour away. So she had gone for the weekend to her daughter to help kind of get the fire stuff situated. And while she was gone, she had a massive flood in her basement and she had no idea. And now she's going through the renovation process and they have to take, they have to redo all the floors and like up to two feet of the sheet rock on the walls. And she's, I saw her last night and she is so over and I'm like, hey, I have a solution that you might be interested in because the cost that exists there, the hassle of dealing with insurance companies and things like that, it's just not worth it. Not when you have a, pre a prevention system, right? Correct. So the Power G flood, Neil, why don't you tell us a little bit about what makes this flood detector different from any other flood detectors on the market? I'm not as well versed in that. Well, I mean, obviously, yeah, I mean, our flood sensors are using the PowerG protocol, right? So we're getting incredible range. Um, you know, the devices are encrypted. They have frequency hopping so, you know, that nothing can get in the way of those communications. Um, you know, everything about it, you know, just, you know, this and our S-line floods are, are very similar. The only difference would be the ranges between the two of them. But, yeah, I mean, the flexibility of where you can put, you know, this flood sensor and, you know, sometimes we, we, I think we limit ourselves saying that it's a flood sensor. You know, we can use those terminals for other things as well. You know, as a perfect example, in my house, I have a sump, uh, like a sump pump and a float, right? So there's a sensor within my, uh, my sump, uh, you know, basin that is actually connected to one of these as well. And then, you know, I get that advanced warning if, you know, if there's something going wrong with my, um, with my sump sensor, right? But this is all about range. Power G is all about range and just reliability and battery life. You know, the battery life on these, you know, average usage, we're looking four to six years. It's a huge improvement. So with range, how does that differ with different mater building materials? Is there a difference with having a more powerful range built into Power G or does it not really matter? Like well, I mean, it, it does matter, right? You're going to get less interference from concrete walls, floors, you know, joists, okay. metal joists, right? You're going to have less interference and, you know, you know, you have a built-in Power G um, signal test as well, right? So when you enroll these, you'll actually have the lights flickering a certain break, like you know, green or red or yellow, indicating what Power G strength is. So you can actually, you know, move it if you needed to, you know, add a repeater if needed. But you know, the average house, you're never going to have a problem with range with Power G. What about um, using a water valve and a uh, Power G flood sensor in? like business style uh, small business large commercial what does is can you use it you can use power g floods residential you could you know commercial okay. for sure um you know you can put them in your garage right if you're concerned that you're going to get some kind of back flooding from a garage you can put them anywhere you know dishwasher wells you know shower stalls yeah. you know they can go yeah. just about anywhere I think my mind defaults to going to residential installs because that's where a lot of my background is but I mean, if you're running a business and you've got inventory that if water damage happens, you're going to lose all of that money. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it would be such a massive loss to your business if you didn't even, and if you had a flood sensor, it would be so easy to to stop damage from spreading. Like, it's a think no of a file, Yeah, think of a file storage room, right? So people who are still storing all paper files everywhere, right? Could you imagine if, uh, if all those got damaged, right? Or not having that advanced warning to, 
you know, be able to get, you know, especially with an IQ water bell, uh, being able to shut that water off, or even if you can't, and you know, it's a different kind of flood, maybe the sprinkler heads are going off, right? Having that advanced notice that water is, you know, hitting, you know, important things, server rooms, perfect example, right? You know, there's often, you know, there's often, you know, sprinklers just outside of a server room that could be leaking in through the bottom, right? Like, and you don't want your electronics damaged. Yeah, I, we've got a storage unit here in Utah that has a lot of um, like posters and flyers and stuff like that, shirts, swag items. Having a flood sensor in there and it's an outside storage unit would be like super, get like just giving me peace of mind. <laughs> Every time we have a, a winter storm or a big rainstorm, I'm like, okay, how the heck is our storage unit doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this would just give me so much more peace of mind. I should install <laughs> you you know you you know people you can you can get a flood I sensor. do and they're in the office across the way I should just <laughs> knock on the door and say I have a job for you you don't look busy I have something for you <laughs> not a bad okay. plan Bo do we have any questions I, let me see if I can hop off of the presentation real fast and get my uh questions back up I lost them somehow yeah, so just going back to the water valve um sandra asks this only works with alarm.com is, is that correct um it works it works on all of our the dsc and coolsys panels that are z-wave enabled right so if we look at the power series neo or power series pro uh you would have to have um the alarm.com communicator to have the z-wave functionality right but as far as all of the iq panels yeah i mean you can use it locally right you, you know if you're not connected to alarm.com this can be used locally uh, but it obviously just works better in conjunction with, you know, the alarm.com app and, you know, the rules that can be associated to it. Beautiful. And then Sandra also asked, can this be used with Neo? And you just answered that for us. Um, and then next question is, can you install on PVC uh, quarter inch turn valve? Yes, you can install it on any quarter inch turn valve. I mean, up here in, uh, in Alberta, you know, we actually have plastic pipes that come out of the ground. Right, that are so metal going metal coming out of the ground connected to plastic that are going into the the house. Yeah, no problem at all. Beautiful. Those are the questions we have, and then just people excited about Power G, just sharing some experiences of how great Power G is. So that's all we got. For questions. Oh, wait, wait, wait for the next experience I share. Ain't hey, that great? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I had a thought, and then it just left. So we'll let that go. <laughs> oh, um. Our poll results, I completely spaced going over those. So 76% of our attendees today do not um, install the IQ water valve. And I'm curious as to why not. What turns you away from doing something like a water valve? Is it experience? Is it, I don't really see a use for it? Is it cost? Is it complication of install? So if you guys could hop in to the question section and just let me know, I'm just curious. Um, I'm, I'm curious, sir. Go ahead. So I'm curious too. I, I I would love to see some of the some of the reasons as well. And and I'm I'm a convert, right? I mean, you'll understand why later. Uh, but I am a, I am a convert for uh, more more flood protection and uh, definitely IQ water belt. Yeah, I know. I've we've gone through um, three houses. In our first house, we had the sprinkler flood issue. Our second house, within a year of moving in, our water heater burst. And there was no indication or anything like that when we bought the house. And it had flooded our whole um, utility room. And luckily the damage didn't go much further than that. But then later, one of our window wells in our basement had repeat floods from the sprinkler system. So that was fun. We had to replace all the drywall and the carpet. And then in this house, Oh my gosh, are you guys ready for this story? <laughs> in, in my current house, I turned on the washing machine and I left to go to the gym and I came home and my entire kitchen and laundry room had like a quarter inch of water. And I, <laughs> I was like, uh, what's happening? And then I realized it was a washing machine. So I turned off the washing machine. I, you know, I sopped it all up and I was like, what is happening? And it had leaked down down into our basement a little bit into where my husband keeps his ammunition and his guns and luckily though they didn't it didn't go that far but you want to know what the problem was <laughs> i don't have any flood sensors installed yet because we had just moved into this house and so we hadn't set anything up 
I'm converted now. But what had happened was the washing machine hose, the water hose had popped out. <laughs> it, it had just put all of the water on the floor and I had no idea. So when my husband looked at it, he's like, did you pull out the water hose? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Why would I pull that out? Sounds like an important part. <laughs> uh, probably vibrated because um, I've seen it before too. And it's actually supposed to be tie wrapped to that black pipe that goes out. <laughs> yeah, and it definitely is. And I'm like, well, who's the genius who installed it? Looking at him. <laughs> but I mean, just in my experiences with the, the short time I've been a homeowner, there's totally value there. So um, yeah, we have this short video. Yeah, so just kind of going into some more of those uh, scenarios of where you would kind of want to prevent leaks and things. So, Neil, let's talk about your story. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I get to embarrass myself during this, too. Um, <laughs> so early, you know, early of last year, uh, when we started looking at IQ water valve, uh, I, you know, as in my role, one of my roles is to test our new products. So, um, you know, I had IQ water valve installed. Um, you know, over time, you know, I'd moved things around, uh, you know, different sensors, you know, to, you know, as we're testing to make sure things are working properly. And then, you know, early, say early April last year, it's thawing up here in Edmonton. You know, my, uh, my golden retriever loves mud puddles. I mean, what retriever doesn't love mud puddles? Uh, yeah. so we had gone to the, <clears throat> we had gone to the dog park and, uh, you know, she got nice and uh, chocolate covered. She was very, uh, very well head to foot. Uh, so, you know, we came home and, uh, you know, we had, we had winterized our outside, you know, we, we do obviously get colder temperatures up here in Al Alberta. So we had, you know, we had turned off our water, drained the, you know, did everything we were supposed to do um, as far as making sure that, you know, everything was good. Right. So, you know, she, we, we were heading out to some friends, so we figured we'll wash her off first. We're not obviously going to bring, you know, this mud covered dog to our friend's house. And, you know, we turned the outside water bib on and washed her off and, you know, had great pressure everything seemed great in the world um and then we you know we took off and it was uh we were about 40 minutes away we had just kind of got to our friends and uh you know my wife gets a, a call she says oh it's the monitoring station calling and as soon as she says that i'm looking at my app like you know, <laughs> I, I grab my phone and i'm like you know flood detected right so uh, you know it was awesome being able to just go right into the app turn off the water valve uh, then, you know, then I start going into, okay, what's going on? I'm checking my cameras. Like I can see water all, all, all you know, you know, a deep, deep amount of water in my basement. Um, you know, very, very disturbing, you know, started questioning to myself, what, why did it not turn off automatically? Why, why did I have to turn it off? Right. Um, and, I, and it was because of my testing. I had, you know, been adding and deleting devices and I just forgot to reassociate the rule that said, if you detect a flood, automatically turn off the, you know, turn off the water valve, you know, lesson learned, that's never going to happen again. But, you know, I start, <laughs> yeah, but I start thinking, you know, and in previous roles, you know, I was traveling 50, 60, 70% of the time. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I started to think, you know, you know, even when I was you know brought up in the industry, you know, the kind of the rule of thumb was you put the flood at the lowest point in the house, right. right. Which is normally where your drain is, which makes sense. Um, but then I'm starting to think about it, you know, as you know, I'm looking at this damage going, well, you know, and that's where my flood was, because that's where I put it. Right? right. And then I start thinking, like, if I had had a flood over there, like a flood sensor over there, like this would have been a lot sooner, right, less damage. Um, you know, we ended up, you know, conservatively, we were about 15,000 uh, in damage. Um, when the insurance oh, agent, oh, gosh, oh, I know. And then when the agent came, um, he was blown away that we we're able to turn it off so fast, right? You know, I, I actually showed him uh, showed him the water valve. He thought it was the coolest thing. I'm like, he's like, this thing's amazing, right? Um, and I, you know, I kind of asked the question because I do live in a duplex, and I said, you know, if I had to drive back that 40 minutes before I get to turn the water off, you know, what would that have looked like, right? And the insurance guy's like, you don't want to know. Oh right? my he goes, gosh. He goes, you're probably he goes, you're probably 30, 40 grand in damage by that point. Um, you know. 
it would have likely gone through the adjoining wall and flooded my neighbor. Um, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, I, I guess I've never, you know, even myself, I never really thought about how much flood damage, you know, can, what water can cause and what, you know, the overall, you know, impact of it. I mean, you know, my nephew, uh, my nephew had just moved in with us and, you know, the basement was his, you know, we'll call it his, you know, 15 year old bachelor pad, you know, he had to move out. Right. Like, I mean, the entire to your point of what you said, you know, earlier, I mean, we were four feet up. They had to cut every every piece of drywall four feet up, replace all, you know, all the flooring. Uh, there was walls and ceilings damaged from where the water was spewing. And I, as it had turned out, you know, over time, whoever installed that water bib originally had not angled it properly so that it would drain. You know, when I opened the, you know, turn off the water and open up, you know, it should have drained out. Um, well, it didn't. Right. So water just had gone through a bunch of freeze freeze thaw cycles over the, you know, over the, you know, a winter or two. Um, and as soon as I turned that water pressure on, that one little hole just became a gaping hole. Uh, you know, a bright note. Yeah, I got a new uh, washer and dryer because they were uh, they were wet, a new freezer. Um, but, you know, you, you don't think how long it takes. I mean, we were, you know, so this was early March. Um, you know, my nephew wasn't able to get back into the house until late July. Right. Like that was, you know, we, we, we sent him to, <clears throat> to his sister's, we call it a summer vacation rental. We just sent him over there for the summer, but it was, uh, you know, and it, it's shocking just how much water permeates into things. Right. Uh, yeah. now I have flood sensors. I mean, I have more flood sensors than I need. I've got them in my dishwasher. Well, I've got them in the, you know, his shower stall and the wash right underneath the washing machine by my water heater by my, you know, I have my sump pump, um, you know, I always make sure my rules are, uh, you know, obviously <laughs> engaged. And one of the great features that we've worked with alarm.com is that it, uh, you know, we actually get notifications in our app to test our water valves quarterly, right? So you're actually getting a reminder oh. saying, hey, test your water valve, you know, it's time to test your water valve and make sure everything works. But yeah, I, um, you know, I think about, you know, again, all those times I traveled and, and uh, how much damage, you know, could have happened right when I was not home, you know, going to Mexico, you know, traveling for, you know, traveling for vacation or business. I, uh, I, I am such a fan. I, you know, I, you know, I can't thank even, you know, our own team enough for building, you know, such a, such a, you know, an amazing water valve shut off tool that is so easy to install, right? That's the thing. It's so easy to install. Right. The and, thing uh, that's crazy is it takes a situation like that to really understand why, like it shouldn't, it shouldn't take that, but it definitely in this kind of situation, it definitely does. If you guys want to learn more and uh, about Neil's story, we have a case study. And if you go to the the go to webinar control panel and scroll all the way down to handouts, you'll be able to reference it there. If after this webinar you don't have access to it, just go to qualsys.com, click on products, and then water valve. We also put it there at the bottom of the page as well. So um, I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're just using your story across the board. So get excited. <laughs> I, I, it's funny because when the plumber came to look at the damage too, he's like, oh, that's the most amazing thing ever because he's thinking he needs to install it. I'm like, yeah, no plumber required. He's like, no, <laughs> no, no, no interest anymore. Right. But he yeah. did check it out. He did check it out. He goes, this thing works perfect. Right. I have been thinking a lot about the water valve and we have a lot of people. Thank you for responding to my question earlier about why you're not installing a water valve a lot of folks didn't know we had it or that uh what this is their first introduction to the power g flood sensor so it seems like people's focus is so much in other places like security right because it's primarily a security system that makes sense but i've been thinking about it a lot and i think a flood sensor is such an easy way to protect a client's home without doing much like you're in, you just install a bunch of them, which is going to put money in your pocket as a dealer. It's going to protect the customer because they have peace of mind for a situation like this for Neil. And I'm sure you could call him on site and he'd be like, you don't want to not have water protection, you know, <laughs> but, um, and it's a device that you install and you just kind of leave. You doesn't require tons of maintenance. It doesn't require that, you know, especially using power G where it saves that battery life. It is going to, the battery is good. It's going to be more reliable. You're not going to have to do truck rolls or anything like that. And like Neil's doing, you can set up those quarterly tests to give you that peace of mind that everything is working as it should. 
And it's a device that you install and go. And I love that about the water valve, the um, flood sensor. And then the water valve is like that times two, right? It's a little bit more expensive of a product. You can only really install one at a home, but it could be a game changer. I mean, Neil, you saved, oh, what, around 20 grand, according to the saved, insurance guy? Saved my insurance guy 20 grand. <laughs> sure, sure. I save. I sure. I'm sure my uh, my premium increases aren't going to be as as bad as they could have been. Right? Yeah, but, uh, like it's just it's one of those devices, the IQ or the IQ IQ flood, Power G flood, or one of those devices that. I mean, how many do you have in your home? How many floods? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I probably, I probably got five now. I, I think I have five flood sensors now. Uh, you know, and the funny thing is, as soon as this happened. Uh, I ordered an IQ water valve for my parents uh, and for my in-laws and I installed, I mean, it was immediately like, I'm going to install these things. I'm, you know, I don't want anybody else to ever live through it. It's such a, you know, an interruption to your life, um, you know, and just everything they have to do, right. To make sure there's no mold. Um, you know, it was, it was, I didn't, I never understood how bad a flood could be. Right. And then once I saw this, I was like, well, this is, well, this and is talk terrible. about a customer loyalty story, right? Like you install these devices and the customer's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then they have a flood situation. Imagine how they're going to be si like just singing your praises as a dealer, right? They're going to be doing what you did. I need one for my parents. I need one for my friends. I need one for everybody. I need water sensors everywhere. Like it's just the right thing, you know, but okay. Thank you for sharing your story. We are almost out of time and I wanna make sure we get to some of these questions. You guys are very talkative on the chat and I love that. So let's see, we've got a few people. David talks about how much he loves Power G. Uh, four to six years, safe, safe statement for most ooh, Power G batteries. He uh, has just switched batteries and his system was installed in 2014. So convert there for Power G. Um, Let's see, is there a power G sensor that can be installed in a water cooler? Can the temperature sensor can? Can the flood sensor? Can it withstand? The flood? Temperature? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. Um, okay. Patrick clarifies will the water valve fit on a fourth inch pipe? Uh, a four you, inch pipe? A fourth, one fourth, yeah. I know you can adjust those clamps, but I don't know the specifics of how small it gets. That might be on the spec sheet though. Yeah, that will be on the spec sheet. I feel like that's a little small, but those clamps are adjustable to different sizes. So okay. it might. The spec sheet you can find on the products page on qualsys.com on the water valve down there at the bottom. And then you also can hop into the dealer portal if that doesn't give you your answer, Patrick. And, uh, you can ask tech support or search their database and it'll give you it there. Okay, Sandra knows about the power, flood, the power G flood sensor, but didn't know about the water valve. So she is definitely excited about that pairing. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, Steve says that, or he's been told that the water valve communicated via Z-Wave from yep. the alarm.com radio. Yeah, and it's using uh, our new 700 series Z-Wave chip, so range, uh, range and speed uh, is it's super fast. Yes. Super fast. Um, Rod says he's coming from Honeywell Products, and it's his first introduction to the Power G flood sensor. Can this be used with Total Connect? No. No. Right. It can only it only works on DSC and Qualsys panels. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now they now the water valve. Uh, the water valve being Z-Wave can work on other manufacturers' products. Obviously, it works better on ours, uh, but it, it can work on other manufacturer products. Perfect. Um, let's Got see. another question, Whitney, um, from Gary. It says, most of my installed residential security systems are DSC and PASA, so how about compatibility? Impasa. I don't know enough about those two. The DSC and PASA does have Z-Wave. Uh, so yeah, as long, again, as long as it's Z-Wave, even if it's Z-Wave 500, uh, it will it will work. Um, you just have to have the water management plan on alarm.com to be able to see it through the app. Okay. Calvin wants to clarify, can you use the flood sensor inside of a walk-in cooler? I mean, 
I don't see why not. No, not I know that either. most of our devices are rated for cold temperatures. I guess it depends how cold. Are we talking freezer status or if it's just a cooler, then yeah, I'm going to say go for it. Yeah, I don't have the, unfortunately, I don't have the handout for on hand for the 99E5, but I can't see any reason to want. Mark, uh, Mark's in chat. Uh, Mark, if you feel free to come off mute if you want. But I am pretty sure it will uh, it'll have no issue. I mean, obviously, you're going to have some challenges. Depending on the cooler makeup, you may need to put a repeater from the, you know, because PowerG, you know, going through coolers could have some challenges. Uh, not huge challenges. They will work. You just may need a repeater. But, uh, yeah, these these are, I think these are good to minus, I want to say minus 10, but I'm trying to find yeah, it. We'll just do it. <laughs> David says that he's currently using an Impasa with the 4985 PowerG flood sensors to answer Jerry's earlier question. So we do have a use case scenario. Yep. Yep. Okay. Perfect. I think we've got most of the questions. Um, Dave, David's always good for answering questions on, in our own chat. Perfect. Yeah, I think we are caught up. You guys, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I hope it was useful. Feel free. We'll send you a survey. Feel free to give us feedback. Always want to hear your feedback and to know what you want to hear, what you want to learn, what you want to talk about so we can make sure these are worth your time and everything like that. Neil, Thank you for sharing your story and putting yourself on the line for such a bad situation. Props, my man. Like, like I said, I'm I'm a monstrous fan. You're never going to hear me say anything negative about floods or water valves. <laughs> we have a convert, folks. All right, perfect. You guys, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day, and we will see you again at the next marketing workshop next week with a new guest. It won't be Neil this time, but it will be somebody else. Okay, we'll see you. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care, everyone.